everyone, Michelle with Silver Liney Daydreams. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. In today's video, we're gonna show you how we were able to replace this old, ugly jackknife couch in our camper. And we were able to do it for less than $20. I'll be showing you a couple of different ways that you can recover it or replace it completely. And I'll also be talking about the pros and cons of each. Let's get started. The first thing we did was take out the old RV couch. We meticulously recorded it all because we thought that we were going to just recover it and put the couch back in. But when we found a really nice large 5 inch thick piece of foam at a neighbor's garage sale for only $3, we decided to take a different route. It wasn't too difficult to take out the old couch, but it was a little awkward to get at all of the mechanicals. Once we got the foam back home, my plan was to adhere a thin piece of Luan to the back of the couch for structure and also so that I would have something to staple the drop cloth to. This first method was going to be a quick no-sew option where I just staple the front of the drop cloth to the wood on back and fold in all the sides like wrapping a gift and then staple that to the back as well. Simple and done. In the short amount of time it took me to cover this cushion, I started thinking about what it might look like if I ate chili while I was sitting on the couch, or if the grandkids or guests wanted to sit here and have a snack. I thought, boy, it would be really nice if I could just take the cover off of the couch to wash it. So I decided to just go back to the plan we had when we were going to cover the original RV couch. Day two, method two. It's a very simple method that's similar to how a pillowcase or a slipcover works, but I added an easy box corner to the sides. If you've never sewn a box corner before, don't worry about it, it's super easy. I'm definitely not a seamstress, and believe me, if I can sew one, anyone can. It's just one additional seam on the side, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. The first thing I did was to take the wood off the back of the foam. After that, I just had to wrap it and start to tightly pin the drop cloth inside out around the couch cushion starting at the sides. I use safety pins to keep it snug. Just be careful that you don't pin the drop cloth to the cushion. I knew I wanted the seam to be at the bottom of the cushion, so I positioned the finished edge of the drop cloth there so that I would have a nice edge to sew over when I sewed up the cover. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you what I mean in a bit. I also wanted the seam at the bottom, so not only could I easily take the cover on and off to wash it, but I can also flip it around from front to back for better wear. After I pinned and marked the one end for the box corner, I trimmed and did the same thing with the other side. If you see that peak on the corner that I'm kind of futzing with, that's where the seam will go to make the box corner. You'll see me mark it lightly with a pen. Normally I would use a chalk or a pencil, but they just weren't handy. And then I carefully took the drop cloth off of the couch cushion with the pins still intact. I sewed the side seams where the safety pins were first. And because our cushion is five inches thick, I then sewed a five inch seam on the corner at a 45 degree angle to square out the sides to make the box corners. I repeated the process for the other side and then I checked just to be sure that the seam and the corners both came out the same. And then comes the very awkward task of putting a very snug drop cloth over the couch cushions. I tried to get the corners in first to be sure that it would fit square.
on the drop cloth, I kept this edging here so that that would be on top. So what I'm going to do now, this is the raw edge. I'm just going to tuck that in. I'm going to cut off some of this extra that's in here and then I will just put a couple small stitches in here. One, you know, I don't know, maybe five of them so that if we need to if we need to take it off and wash it, it's easy to do. And then um, I can switch it around. Let's say this side gets dirty for whatever reason. Now I'll just switch it over to this side. So this way, these are able to come off. They're washable. Next, if you have couch skirting like we do, you'll wanna take that off. Or if you prefer, you can just add one long skirt piece to the couch platform. I'll show you what I mean in a bit. They were super simple to recover. I just used the finished edge that came on the drop cloth for the bottom of each piece. If you want, you can mark where the original screw holes are by putting a pin through them and then marking it with a felt tip pen. We also made a top skirting piece to cover the platform so it looked more finished. This is what I was talking about earlier if you wanted to just make one long couch skirt instead of covering the other two pieces. To make this part of the skirting, lay the drop cloth out over the couch platform with the finished edge on the bottom. Have it wrap around the corner a little if you have one like we did, and then just staple it into place. And then just attach the other pieces of the covered skirting, put it all together, decorate, and enjoy. A few pros for the staple method are it's a no-sew project, it's super fast, and there's a possibility to use it over an existing couch if there's wood to staple it onto. I would say that the cons for the stapling method would be that you can't or it's not easily removable to wash, the seams are a little bulky, the corners aren't as neat, you can't flip it from front to back for wear, and there may be an extra cost if you need to buy some wood. Pros for the slip cover method would be it's much neater in appearance. It's still super fast. There's still a possibility to use it over an existing couch. It can be flipped from front to back and it's very easy to take off to wash. A few cons for using the slip cover method. It may not be as snug as pulling and stapling would be. You need to have a sewing machine. And if you're using foam, it might not be as firm as the original RV couch. for watching our first RV Monday makeover. I hope that you were able to find some inspiration to try recovering the couch in your RV. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>